You're listening to Out of the Box Podcast with Rosie Tran. Please subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio and leave a positive comment if you like us. Out of the Box Podcast is sponsored by HugMeTees.com. Hug Me Tees, spread love, give a hug. HugMeTees.com. I'm here today with the director of the new thought movie, John Miller. John, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great. How are you, Rosie? Good. I'm so excited to have you on here. I am a huge fan of new thought thinking. And I love what you're doing because a lot of people when I tell them that I'm religious science or new thought, they are totally clueless. (laughs) Yeah, it is funny because uh, so many of the ideas and uh, principles from new thought have really spread and and, uh, become widely accepted. But for some reason, um, you know, the actual name new thought and and some of the different churches and centers uh, just never gained a whole lot of recognition. Some people don't really know exactly what it is. And I noticed that that was the theme in your movie that people were saying, well, what is new thought? What What is this thinking? <laughs> you know, Oprah is a huge fan of new thought. She she pushes a lot of the thinking. A lot of people know about yoga. A lot of people know about, you know, Joel Osteen, who is um, uh, pushed as kind of a progressive, positive Christian. Sure. And a lot of these thinkings are just new thought thinkings. And people are seeing them as one thing or seeing them as another and not really understanding. So wh- what got you started on your journey in the new well, thought well, you know, arena? Uh, <laughs> well, and when we talk about new thought, for those that aren't familiar with it, it's really basically it's it's positive thinking. And it's kind of all based around this idea that that your thoughts are causative, that the thoughts that you're having are actually shaping your life and shaping your reality. And so what really got me interested in it uh, from the beginning was, um, you know, I was like a lot of people. I'd read a lot of self-help books and this sort of thing. And and uh, this was probably about, uh, I don't know, maybe around 10 years ago, I really started getting into the self-help uh, books. And, you know, people like Tony Robbins and uh, Zig Ziglar and, and even, <laughs> even some of the, uh, you know, the Wayne Dyer and Deepak Chopra stuff. And, you know, all along, it felt like there was a, a spiritual undercurrent that there was a um, that they were all kind of connected. Kind of, yeah, they really were. I mean, there was some sort of uh, um, something that held it all together because they they all seemed to be very much related. Um, the ideas that were in all of these different books and uh, became very interested in that. And uh, and at the same time, I'd kind of really fell out of church and wasn't really going to church and and uh, and, and I thought, well, you know. Uh, I don't know if I want to go and, and visit a lot of different churches, but I can uh, I can learn a lot just from going on my iPod and uh, and finding different church you know services and, and so I kind of dug around and found different uh, church podcasts and uh, somehow or another I came along a uh, Unity Church podcast and uh, something about it just really struck me and and I could tell right away that there was some sort of uh, um, connection there between a lot of the messages that I'd heard through self-help books and programs and and what I was hearing with this Unity Church. And uh, as I became, became uh, you know, kind of digging more and more into it, I found that there's, you know, a very, uh, very high correlation between the two. And um, and so I got involved at uh, taking classes and, and uh, sharing some of my music at a local religious science church here in Mobile, Alabama. And uh, as I became started taking classes and and that sort of thing, um, you know, more and more of the history of uh, the New Thought movement just really intrigued me. And and uh, as I began to learn more about it, I found out that uh, that my grandmother on my on my dad's side even had a a correspondence where she was taking classes through Unity Church. And, that is so cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. I, I had this whole uh, family history to it that I didn't even realize. And, uh, well, what I like, well, I like, I just want, I don't want to cut you off, but I I love that you're, I love that you're in Mobile. I love it. (laughs) I love it because a lot of times I try to explain some of the stuff that I'm telling to people and they go, Oh, well, you're just California. You're just like a hippie. (laughs) And I'm like, No. And another thing I love, 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 and what really resonated with me with the New Thought Movement is that Uh a lot of people, and you just explained it, your perfect example, are kind of disillusioned a little bit with traditional 
like church teachings, it doesn't sure, it doesn't sure. ring true with them. It doesn't match modern society. They're like, wait a minute, you know, it says in the Bible you can stone your wife to death. That doesn't make logical <laughs> sense, you know? <laughs> right, right. No, you're exactly right, and, and uh, you know, it it just goes to show how widespread these these ideas and these themes have gone. I mean, uh, you know, I was telling me about my grandmother. My grandmother lived in Deer Park, Alabama, which is even <laughs> further out in the woods than uh, than where I am. And I love and it. So, you're breaking stereotypes types about the south i'm a southern girl so i'm i'm excited <laughs> that's great and uh you know it, it's just uh it just goes to show i mean and and i think you know we, you mentioned joel osteen earlier i think he's a perfect example of somebody who is um speaking a lot of these uh ideas and principles in a way that uh people that maybe aren't as familiar with it can understand and uh accept that they're into their own lives I love his positive version of Christianity. And, you know, he's actually been attacked quite a bit for saying, well, you know, he's not preaching what's actually in the Bible, which is, <laughs> you know, that we're born in original sin. I'm like, you know right. what? There's a lot of things written in the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, and all these religious books that don't resonate with modern day society. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I think uh, so much of um, traditional religion has uh, sort of put suffering as a virtue kind of on a on a platform and and said you know we should be suffering and 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 this is the reason why suffering is good and and uh i think what we've kind of come to understand in more modern times is that uh that god doesn't want us to suffer i mean <laughs> there are, there may be lessons that we need to learn and there may be painful experiences along the way but we're not here just to suffer no, that doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> We're here to be amazing and to shine our light. And, and right. I just, I love the positivity involved in it because, and because it shows people that, you know, religion, I think a lot of people have stepped away from conventional religion because they're sick of sitting there and hearing mm -hmm. someone preach from the pulpit that you're a sinner, you right. need to repent, you're a horrible human being. It's like, wait a minute, this doesn't feel good to me. Right. No, I think you're exactly right. And I think that's maybe uh, the appeal of the New Thought movement and, and, and beyond that, the self-help movement, is that uh, it's, it's not based on, you know, how terrible we are and, and, you know, how unworthy we are. It's based on, how you know, awesome making, we are. Right, making the most <laughs> of, of what we can be and, and our potential inside that we have. That is great. Also, I love that New Thought and is very in line with psychology and mm. also with science, because I think there's been this push in recent years. I know I see it all the time on the media where science is pitted against religion. Mm. Yeah. Where yeah. people are saying, well, if you're religious, you're just a fanatical lunatic and you just have faith and you're not believing in science. And if you're scientific, then you're very logical and this and that, et cetera, et cetera. But that's right. not true. I mean, science religion is based the very basis of religion before you know even before the bible even before the torah the Quran, all these books on the natural world you know yeah, native americans yeah. saw spirits or energy or other things that you know deemed close to their heart and they started studying it and later you know great teachers and you know like the buddha and gandhi and other people sure. came forward with their beliefs and so religion and science are not opposites they're actually quite in line Right, and it's it's an exploration of truth, uh, both of them, and and I think that's um, really where New Thought kind of got a lot of its earlier beginnings. Was uh, people were looking for a practical use, application use of spiritual, yeah, yeah, application of spirituality, and they thought, you know, if we're going to practice this spirituality, then we ought to be able to, in some way, quantify the results, and and of course, there's not a you know. Uh, you know, a hundred percent correlation that if I do step one, two, and three, that it's going to, uh, you know, equal this. But, but there is a, a direct correlation between our actions and, and the results that we get, and and that goes right along with spirituality. And uh, you know, uh, Phineas Parkhurst Quimby, uh, who's known uh, as the father of the New Thought movement, was one of the one of the very first uh, people to to say these type of things. And, and Ernest Holmes was right there talking about, you know, that one day the mystics and the scientists would, 
um, meet each other and they would come to the same conclusions. Well, in some ways, uh, some of the concepts are literally exactly the same. They're just called something different. So, for example, mm -hmm. in the Buddhist, um, you know, religion, which mm -hmm. is very aligned with new thought, they have the idea of karma and dharma and other things like that. And in new thought, it's, you know, you create your own reality, positive mm -hmm. thinking, you attract more. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And, Absolutely. This, and Christianity, you've got sowing and reaping and, and exactly. Uh, and also, yeah. you know, there, there's e even some things about traditional Christianity that are now proving scientifically to make logical sense. For example, you know, a lot of people say, well, confession to me doesn't make sense because it, it seems like you can do whatever bad things you want. And then you just mm -hmm. confess. First of all, that's not the basis of confession. Right. But um, I think they're kind of getting it wrong. But when it comes to confession, it's now proven that talk therapy and talking about your problems helps release negative energy. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of correlations. I'm not an expert. You know, I never claim yeah. to be an expert, but I've just seen these these connections. And it just to me, when people say that science and religion are at opposites, I think they're referring to extremist religious people. <laughs> sure. And, sure. I, and I don't like that, you know, more moderate and logical religions are kind of swept under the rug for these religious fanatics. Well, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, every once in a while you see these studies that come out about prayer and, uh, and there'll be studies that tell, you know, all of the therapeutic benefits of prayer, but I don't think I've ever seen one where it, where it actually, uh, divided the prayers up and said, well, this one's more effective than that <laughs> one. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it, it comes with the assumption that, um, that it's it's not about what religion you are, but it's about that connection. Exactly. I totally agree. You know, I've had so many people say, well, how can you believe in religion? Because there there's so many. How can you choose? <laughs> it's like all of them have this underlying current of mm -hmm. love and compassion mm -hmm. and all these positive things. Mm -hmm. And it's people, not religions, who have morphed them and distorted them. And, you know, the radical Islamist or the radical Christians or the radical whatever. If you're radical, it's not mm. you're not in the realm of reality. Right, right. You're making it a list of do's and don't do's. and <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Right. So I want to get into what made you decide to actually start this movie. Um, you're, you're not a filmmaker, are you, by trade? <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's funny. I, uh, I'm actually uh, I'm a musician. And uh, also a, a independent video production guy, and and so what uh, my background in in video production is, I've done you know a lot of commercials and event by videography and that sort of thing, and uh, so as I began learning about new thought and and some of the history, uh, it really just uh, resonated with me. I I really just uh, really took to it and uh, couldn't get enough of of learning about it and. And not just learning about it, but learning the history of it. And, uh, you know, I'd seen the movies, you know, What the Bleep Do We Know and uh, The Secret and a lot of other movies. And uh, and I thought, man, these are great. You know, they, they talk about new thought ideas and new thought principles. But the one thing I noticed was they never really came out and talked about new thought. You know, it was it was kind of a... It, it was uh, if you if you knew about new thought, it was kind of an understood thing. But if you didn't, you kind of had to look, you know, read into it a little bit more to find. So some you couldn't of the find the basics, and, <laughs> right? Yeah, and uh, and and I kept thinking, I, I really want to watch this movie that's about new thought. You know, I think that would be really interesting. And you couldn't and, uh, find it. <laughs> I couldn't find it. And, uh, and it, and that's it how the me. most amazing things are created. People say, <laughs> "I need this." Oh, it's not there, right? Right, it doesn't exist, and uh, and so I and I thought, well, maybe I could make that, and uh, and and that went on for about a year, and I kept thinking, no, that I don't think that's it. That can't be it. I, you know, it, it must be out there somewhere, but um, the movie that I wanted to watch just didn't exist, and um, so finally, I, I brought myself to um, to just sit down with a pen and paper. You know, I thought, I don't. I don't even know what I would do or, you know, I don't have necessarily the resources that I would need to do it. But let me just sit down with a pen and paper and write down, you know, just some basic things like what would I want to talk about? Who would I want to talk to? And, and, and you know, just start with the basics. And uh, before I knew it, I was um, I was starting on the movie and I just kind of started with people that I knew and, uh, and people that. I knew that if, if nothing else, I could guilt them into being in the movie. And, uh, but it was, 
what was really interesting is that once I got started, uh, it seemed like one interview always led to another. And, and, uh, you know, as I began to talk to people about what I was doing, more doors opened up. Yeah, I really did. And, and, and not just that, but, uh, I found that there were a lot of people out there that wanted to see this movie made <laughs> just like I did. You know, it's like, yeah, we've been waiting on you. <laughs> Come on in. You well, know? It's and, so uh, funny because you're actually living all of the principles that New Thought teaches. You are taking into your own hands creation and yeah. creating, you know, and doing serving a purpose, a positive and higher purpose. And it seems like you're living the principles through the creation of this movie. Yeah, well, you're probably right. And the funny thing about it is, I never really set out. I never really set out to do that. If that makes sense, I, uh, you know, I, obviously, I thought it'd be a good idea, and and uh, I thought I would enjoy it. But uh, I never really, I never could have just imagined. Uh, being able to do it. You know what I mean? It was kind of like, a really no, a, I know well, exactly what you're talking about. You sound just like me. I, I have to look back at my life so right. many times. You know, I was an atheist for so long because I, I didn't mm. resonate with conventional religion. Sure. And I grew up in a very multi-religious household where, you know, my aunt was Jehovah's witness. I had another aunt that mm. was Buddhist. I had another aunt that was Christian. And I just thought, well, what is the <laughs> point of all this? You know, they're all 20 right. different religions. No, nobody agrees with anyone else. They fight over it. It doesn't seem yeah. like a very, spiritual principle and so I was atheist for the longest time and then so many things unfolded in my life that I thought okay there's got to be something out there a god a spirit an energy something pushing me along because Mm. you know the life that I have now was far greater than anything I could have imagined for myself that's awesome and so it seems like you set out on this path and then you know you were led in a way yeah, it really was. It was uh, it was one step at a time. And, uh, you know, it's funny. Something you just said made me think of uh, one of the guys in the movie is uh, Bishop Carlton Pearson. And he kind of went through this whole uh, transformation. He was a, uh, a very uh, well-known, well-respected Pentecostal preacher at a megachurch and uh, went through this transformation where he, um, he started to question certain things that uh, – that his faith had told him that he had to believe, you know, such as hell. And, and, and he, and he really, he really began to question, you know, why would a loving creator, you know, send anybody to hell? And, uh, it has started on this, this whole thing. And, and he actually became a new thought minister, uh, at the end of it all. But he it's funny. He says that he interacts with atheists all the time and, and, and he'll have people say, well, I don't believe in God. And, and he'll say, well, which, which God is it you don't believe in? <laughs> you, know, because, you know, what ends up happening is they say, well, I don't believe in a God that, uh, you know, condemns people to hell and, you know, uh, wants you to, you know, wants to give you a list of things that you can and can't do and all this. And he's like, well, you know I what? I don't believe, believe in that, in that God either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, that we're, is great. we're on the same track here, you know. So, uh and I want to inc- I want to encourage atheists and agnostics to keep looking out there because mm. for me as an atheist, mm. you know, that was a part of me that I really shut down by saying, no, I'm not going to. And it's psychological. There's very strong psychological evidence that there's four aspects of your life that you need to be happy. Mm. Your physical happiness, your mental, emotional and spiritual is on there. And mm. once I realized that it wasn't that I didn't believe in religion, it was just that I was surrounded, like you said, by religious institutions that were sure. not necessarily positive or aligned with my beliefs. And the value that I've gotten from meeting like minded people in the spiritual realm has been 20 fold. And most of the time when I talk mm. to agnostics and atheists and I explain to them what I believe, they go, oh, well, that's what I believe. I said, well, then you're not. <laughs> they, go, right. they go, oh, I'm atheist. I'm agnostic. I'm like, well, what, what, you know, I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm religious science or, you know, I, I believe in new yeah. thought or unity. And they go, well, what's that? And then right. I explain it to them. They go, well, that's what I think. <laughs> so keep looking guys keep looking it's not there's nothing it's just that there's nothing that you've seen to this point that aligns with you absolutely i've got uh one of the guys that's in the movie is uh robert m price and uh he's actually he's an atheist himself um but actually he's uh he's studied the bible so much that he um 
I mean, he's a, a very well respected uh, resource on the Bible and and uh, what the Bible says. And uh, he was a part of this uh, project where they went and uh, analyzed, uh, you know, some of the different statements within the Gospels and and uh, polled different theologians as to what, you know. Uh, what is most likely the words of Jesus versus what was most likely added later and all this kind of stuff. And, and, uh, he actually, even with him being an atheist, he very much praised, uh, the benefits and the practicality of new thought. And, uh, it's, uh, part of the, part of the movie that didn't actually make the, the cut, but he actually goes and, and says, Hey, if you're an atheist to uh, try a new thought, you know, and, and uh, you might you might actually like <laughs> you might some change of the your mind aspects of it. Yeah, it's it really was uh, kind of interesting that he had that take on it. Well, I think there's positive aspects in every religion, mm-hmm. and and there's a there is a thread that goes mm. through all of them that is very similar in thinking, mm. and it's just a matter of choosing what works for you. I think you know just because you grew, I, I know a lot of people are just really disillusioned. I talk to so many people that just are just have stopped going to church, stop believing in anything because they're just like, it's a farce. You know, they look at the Roman empire <laughs> right. or they go to the right. Vatican and see all the gold and they go, okay, this isn't, yeah. you know, this yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah. And so I just yeah. think it's really important to keep looking out there. Mm. Um, are there any crazy or interesting stories or things that you learned that you didn't know while making the movie? <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I talked about that uh, that I kind of wrote out. You know, I started with the list and and kind of went from there. And and uh, I'd done a lot of research, uh, you know, on the New Thought movement, and um, and so I kind of knew what we were going to be hitting on and everything else. But what really struck me, and uh, if you've seen the movie, you you know this to be true. But uh, what really struck me was the fact that whenever I got through. Uh, video and everything and uh, starting to put it together uh, what I realized was that this movie didn't need any kind of narration that it told its own story (laughs) yeah it really did (laughs) everybody was telling the same story and so you've got all these people and and you have to understand uh, that New Thought is a very um, it's a very wide umbrella there's a lot of organizations and groups that follow fall under the umbrella of new thought and they don't they don't all necessarily um believe all the exact same things um but as i interviewed all of these different people it it was clear that they were all touching on the same things and and uh teaching the same ideas and um and so whenever i got ready to put it all together i i decided not to put any narration because um you know it was like one interview just really flowed right into the next one and and um we began to see kind of the history of this movement and and how the torch was really passed um, from group to group and generation to generation. That is so beautiful. It seems like it just came together like a puzzle piece that was always meant to be there. <laughs> it really did. It, it really was like uh, putting a puzzle together um, because, you know, as you began to move things around, you got to see how everything really kind of fit together. And um, of course, uh, if you've seen the movie, you know that uh, we touch on, of course, the, we've talked about the link between uh, New Thought and self-help, and um, there's also the link between New Thought and uh, the Alcoholics Anonymous movement. I love um, the Alcoholics Anonymous movement. I want to yeah. touch on that a little bit after. I think it's a great yeah. way, it's a great intro into a lot of self-help and new thought thinking and even if you're atheist you know i know a lot of people that say well i don't want to give up you know whatever to god i don't believe in god Mm. it works because it's not really about god it's about Mm. letting go of control Mm. and god or a higher power is just something because uh, the a lot of things with alcoholism is that it's it's a control thing you know, people need to feel loved or they need attention or they, they are using it to mask negative emotions sure, or other I've, things like that. We've got, uh, one of the guys in the movie is, uh, Daryl, I mean, excuse me, not Daryl, Dale Worley. And, uh, he is a, uh, unity minister now in Savannah. And, uh, he talks about, um, 
you know, getting in a recovery program and how, uh, you know, it's at, at the time that he got into his recovery program, he didn't want to think about God. He didn't want to, um, you know, he kind of had this, uh, I, you know, I don't know exactly what happened, but he had a bad experience and, uh, you know, and, and that, that happens a lot of times. And, and so he didn't want to have anything to do with God, any kind of group that had anything to do with God. But there was something about that program that um, they talked about a higher power, you know. And, and so he was able to kind of let go of this, you know, all of these uh, all of these preconceived notions that he had about God and kind of focus on, okay, a higher power. Maybe, maybe I can begin to understand you know, a different identity of God, you know, by approaching it that way. And, uh, and that happens for a lot of people. It is. And I think that any resistance to going into AA by saying, well, I don't believe in God, or it's not going to work for me is, is your mm. alcoholic ego talking, saying, <laughs> don't go in there. <laughs> right, they might yeah. fix it. <laughs> well, you know, you say that, but it really, it really is the case. I mean, a lot of times, the thing that, uh, that's going to really resonate with you and really uh help you the most is a thing that's that uh has a lot of resistance inside of you you know oh, you anything all- that you're resisting is something you need <laughs> it's true it is so true yeah. anytime something yeah. makes you mad anytime mm. somebody offends you anytime yeah. you're triggered that means that's a mm. button and that button mm. is there for a reason <laughs> right no you're you're exactly right. for you to explore and look at and examine and say why did god put this button here Hey, let me tell you this. This is kind of funny. The first time, uh, the first time I ever uh, got involved with any kind of New Thought Church or anything, I had uh, I'd had a private meeting with a uh, religious science minister here in Mobile. Uh, he was here at the time, uh, and that's David Alt. But uh, anyway, he had invited me to come to their church service, and uh, you know, he seemed nice enough, but. At that time, I really didn't know a whole lot about New Thought, and I and, uh, thought, oh, this is this could be kind of woo-woo or something, you know. <laughs> Who knows what's going to be happening behind these doors, you know. They might they might have snakes. They're going to brainwash know. me. <laughs> right, it's a call. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We, we're all drinking the Kool-Aid and, and wearing white robes or something. But So I pulled up in the parking lot, and I just sat there for a minute, and I just... I was so scared. I, and I eventually I ended up just turning around and going all the way back home. And that was like 20, 25 minutes away. And, but as I look back, it was like, it was like, I knew there was something powerful about to happen. And, uh, and I, it was just something that I, I guess I had to resist before I could, before I could accept it. Well, it's actually, like I said, there, there's a very strong link. I don't want to say it's proven because, Mm. you know, even the laws of gravity have been broken with, you know, aeronautics and air flight <laughs> yeah. and helicopters. So I, I never want to say things are absolute truths because, mm. you know, we we don't know what we don't know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there is strong evidence in the scientific and psychology worlds that uh, when there is a resistance to something then it's an issue that we need to work on. And in, in mm. New Thought, we, you know, they have all these sayings, what, res- what resists persists and other things right, yeah. about creating your own reality. And so I just think mm-hmm. that, that it's important to look at things that we are attached to. You know, Buddhism says yeah. attachment is the root of all suffering. Mm. And in a way it is, because yeah. if you're sitting there and, and someone... I, I guess I want to explain this to listeners who don't know because you know I have had listeners ask me certain questions about concepts that I talk about sure. but um so uh, you probably know this we become attached to certain identities or ideas and then we like to def- our ego likes to defend them sure right so sure. if someone says well Rosie you know Asian women are because su- I'm Asian are submissive and that's something that I defend vigorously and I get really angry about yeah you know it's some it's a part of my identity that maybe I'm not comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. Because in reality, we're all can be submissive. We all can be aggressive. We're all, we're everything and nothing at the same time. We're ev- we're everything. We have the capacity mm. to be absolutely everything. And all of us have that inside of us to be whatever, you know, you know, if I say John, well, you're you're just a redneck and mm. you get offended and <laughs> a- angry by that, you know, and just say, "Well, how could you and how dare you?" It's probably something yeah. you need to look at because 
maybe you're not you know you're right. uh, you're not a redneck but that's something that angers you because people have that preconception of you but mm -hmm. in reality yeah. you're so much more than that you're a person i'm sure a brother you know an uncle a father a whatever you're yeah. a, you're a spirit you're an energy you're unconditional love i can put a thousand labels on you and all of them would be true and all of them well, would be false yeah and i think it's i think it's kind of an attachment to uh you know, I am what people think I am, or I am what what how people label me, and uh, and so you know, I think um, you know, I think that can that can get definitely in our in our subconscious as well. And so you are right when you say you know what you're resisting is kind of like something that you really needed, mm. because any time we get you know have that feeling, it, it's it's kind of weird. It sounds backwards because you say well if something makes me uncomfortable i should stay away from it right <laughs> right that would yeah. be the well, conventional I think, knowledge i think you know and i think the point that we're we're trying to get across to is 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 not necessarily that it's something healthy but it's something that needs to be explored it or addressed be, exactly right, or looked into it's not that oh you know being on the side of this building makes me nervous so i need to jump <laughs> <laughs> no no that's not what that's not what but i'm I saying to, at all i need to look into and explore you know why is that what what is it about this it's, why uh, does it bring me so much fear right, why does it make right, me uncomfortable exactly. what's behind this what yeah exactly. exactly that's you're making a much more eloquent point than i am <laughs> <laughs> it's the but redneck yes. in me i can't help it <laughs> <laughs> but if something makes you uncomfortable instead of getting yeah. angry or upset or mad it's very important to ask mm. why because yeah. that is something that's going to lead our minds and our souls to open and unfold even further. Well, it's kind of like a mirror. I mean, you know, it's like, what am I seeing here? What What is this? What is this that I'm looking at? You know, and, uh, you know, we could take it for what it is and just leave it alone or, or we can explore it and see, you know, kind of learn a little bit more about ourselves and why we are the way we are. Yeah. And I think that is really, really important. I also want to say that your film made me a huge fan of Della Reese. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's great. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, whenever I first started putting all these ideas together about what I wanted the movie to be, um, she was one of the ones that came to mind because uh, a lot of people are familiar with Della Reese, but uh, a lot of people don't know that she is a New Thought minister and has been for, oh gosh, uh, I don't know, maybe 30 or more years. Um, she's been a New Thought minister um, and had her own uh, – her own church out there in Southern California. And, uh, and so I didn't know, uh, I didn't know how to get in touch with her. I didn't, I didn't really know how I was going to interview her, but I, I knew it would be a great interview. And, uh, and so as I began to interview other people, uh, I got a call about a week before I was going to go to California and interview some other people. And it was Bishop Barbara King, who uh, is in Atlanta, which is about five or six hours from here. And, uh, and she was saying, hey, I can meet with you, you know, this week or, you know, or at a later date, you know, which was going to have to be after I came back from California. And I said, well, let's just go ahead and do it. And uh, so I took, I don't know, it was, it was that week or maybe even the next day. I can't remember. But I uh, went up there, got to interview her. And, and uh, after we got done, just out of the blue, uh, we got to talking about California and how I was going to California. And she said, well are you going to talk to Reverend Della? <laughs> and uh, I said, well, I'd like to. I, I don't know how to get in touch with her. You're like, wow, and my mind is really powerful. <laughs> right. <laughs> and she says, uh, she says, oh, I was talking to her this morning. Here, you want me to give you her phone number? <laughs> I said, uh, yeah, I would love that. And <laughs> and so I called her up, and uh, and we just hit it off right away. I, I I said, uh, I called her and, uh, I said, Hey, is this uh, Reverend Della? Uh, I said, how are you? And she said, Oh, I am blessed. And so are you. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and so she, she invited me to come to her house. And, uh, so I came up there and, uh, it was a really, uh, you know, really quick, uh, time that we had up there, but she was, uh, she was open for whatever I wanted to talk about, whatever questions I had, and and uh, willing to talk about all of it. And um, she shared a uh, story of her own personal healing that she had uh, in the movie, and uh, talked about how she had a aneurysm burst on her on the Tonight Show, oh and how she had uh, 
doctors tell her that she wouldn't live and um, she wouldn't be the same. And uh, and she was very polite in telling them that uh, this was a matter between her and God <laughs> and that they didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> and uh, and through um, you know a lot of prayer treatment, a lot of prayer work, um, she did make a, a an amazing recovery and uh, still alive to this day and um, did you know a lot of her um, better known work <laughs> after that happened and uh, so she's had a very uh, blessed life and, and believes very much in these principles and ideas I've heard a lot of stories like that people healing themselves mm. people using yeah. natural ways to heal themselves mm. people um, you know I have an aunt that was diagnosed with six months to live it's been two and a half years now mm. so sometimes modern science isn't a hundred percent like i said we don't know yeah. you know f for us to say well yeah. we know the truth we know that's we're, we should constantly be seeking the truth yeah and yeah. not saying i know because honestly mm. there's so much out there i've used this example yeah. many times on the podcast but i'll use it again it is so egomaniacal for us to say that we know the answer when you look up at the night sky and there's a trillion stars out there in other galaxies and planets that we haven't even stepped foot on. No, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, people joke and and but it's true. Uh, you know, they call it medical practice for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> that is a practice, and we don't have all the answers. And um, you know, we kind of take it for granted these days. But uh, you know. Uh, most doctors that I've been around, they will tell you, you know, be sure to pray, be sure to, you know, think good thoughts when you're in the hospital. Oh, I've and heard that because... before. Be, be, be sure to think good thoughts. I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. Keep, and, keep and your it's... motives positive. And there is this tendency that if you think you're going to get better, you have a, a better chance of getting better. And, uh, you know, we don't yet understand all the reasons why, but, you know, there's a lot of scientific uh, evidence to, to show that. Also, I think that, you know, the resistance to this new thought and positive thinking and other things, it a lot of times I've noticed the people that I meet that are very critical of it tend mm -hmm. to be people who don't really want to accept responsibility for the negative consequences in their mm -hmm. life. Because yeah. the idea of positive thinking is not just that you attract the positive, it's that you attract what you're putting out there. <laughs> no, you're right. It, it's it's one of those things that it can be very empowering, but it can also be very... Uncomfortable. <laughs> it can be very uncomfortable <laughs> and very depressing if you take it the wrong way because, um, you know, the fact is that... Um, all of us, we have faith. We have beliefs in, in one thing or another. And uh, those beliefs that we have are in some way shaping our lives. And, uh, and so if we don't like our lives and how they are kind of showing up for us, um, how our circumstances are showing up, then if you believe these things, it, it means that you know, there's some there's some things that need to be changed. There's some things that some that, housekeeping, uh, <laughs> right? Exactly, <laughs> and that can be very uncomfortable. You know, if you don't if you don't like what you're seeing and and uh, and you believe you have the power to uh, to influence your world, then uh, yeah, there's there's some work to be done there. And a lot of the beliefs are passed down to us subconsciously when we're a child, mm -hmm, unknowingly. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not saying that, you know, if your life is not where you want it to be, listeners, right. that it's your fault. Right. But it is your responsibility to now look in the mirror and say, wait a minute, what did I learn growing up or what beliefs did I learn growing up in my church, in my school, in my family that don't really work? Well, and I think maybe a better way to look at it than saying, you know, what did I do wrong is maybe looking at it and saying, how have I participated in this? You know, what role have I played? You know, and uh, really examine, you know, not from a right or wrong perspective, but really examine it in the perspective of what what might I do differently well, know, that's to what create I... the result that I'm, that I'm looking for. That's what I love about the AA, the NA, and the recovery mm. world is that they yeah. ask people to take the inventory. Mm, one yeah. of the steps and I'm not in AA or NA in nor have I ever been but I I mm -hmm. do know quite a bit about it from friends that have been in it and I've also 
as a comedian performed at many recovery shows and Mm -hmm. and one of my best friends has been in recovery for over 20 years and that personal inventory i think that that's not just an aana principle or you know um al-anon principle i think that that's great for everyone that's like a total positive yeah you're right i mean you don't have to hit you know, rock, rock bottom, bottom. <laughs> to, to put these principles to use in your life. I mean, uh, you know, an improvement is an improvement in your life. And, and, uh, you don't have to wait till the bottom falls out to, <laughs> you know, you can listen to that still small voice that, that gentle voice talking to you, <laughs> you know, you don't have to wait before you get hit by the truck <laughs> you know, to, to, to move to out the way. The voice. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know what I mean? There's a there's a uh, you know an easy way to learn some of these things, and then there's the hard way. Like you said, I don't know that God wants us suffering constantly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> some of our suffering is is that you know is the fact that we the, we didn't listen to that gentle voice. <laughs> there's that joke. I'm going to mutilate it. Where the guy's on the boat and um, people keep coming to help him, and he goes, "Well, I'm waiting mm. for God," and God goes, "I sent three people." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the rescue boat comes. He the says, rescue no, boat. No, no, God says he's going to rescue me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets to heaven. He says, "Why didn't you send anybody? I did. <laughs> I sent three people." There's that's true. And there's so many signs in our life that are pointing mm-hmm. us in the right direction. I think sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. we're a little cloudy to them, and we don't realize mm-hmm. that. You know, it's just like kind of. Um, I don't know if you've ever driven to work or driven to school or wherever you're going driven to the grocery store and you go that route every single day and then one day you become present and you start noticing Mm. the little shops along the way and they've always been there yeah but you just were so focused on the grocery store or this or going to school or getting to work that you didn't know those little shops were there yeah you're right it's that it's that tiniest shift in in perception or consciousness that that makes the world open to us in a whole new way i mean you know Everybody's had that experience where they buy something new, whether it's a new car or a new outfit or something, and then all of a sudden they start seeing it. <laughs> you know, and it's like, wait oh, a minute, seeing it everywhere they go. You mean right? It was like, <laughs> it, you know, they didn't know it was there all along, but you know, because uh, they took ownership of it, it uh, it started showing up everywhere else. That's true. So what was your story of getting into self-help? Um, I know mm. you said you originally you were into self-help and that led you to new thought. Sure. I know a lot of people, like you said, it's a rock bottom or, yeah. or a Mack truck hitting them. They go, oh, I need to wake up. I need yeah. to change something. So what, what? what's your actual personal story, if you don't mind sharing a little bit? No, I don't mind. Uh, you know, I had kind of, um, you know, we, could, we sort of touched on this earlier, but, uh, you know, a lot of people have sort of a um, an unfavorable experience in religion, and and I can't say anything that's uh, that was really just out of the ordinary for me. But um, but at some point, uh, traditional religion, as I'd grown up knowing it, just didn't resonate with me anymore, and and uh, really had a falling out of church because of it. You know, this whole notion of uh, they were all sinners and. Uh, God has condemned us all to hell unless we, uh, unless hell and we, damnation. You're right. Type of preaching. Do, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, and it kind of, it kind of put me on this other path. And and uh, you know, at the time, I, I really didn't know what to make of it. I thought, well, I, maybe I'm just agnostic or something. I don't know. And uh, but at the same time, you know, I never really stopped praying. I never stopped really believing in God. I just I didn't believe in the God that I was hearing about. And, uh, and so one that hates people if they don't step in line. Right. Right. (laughs) The judgmental uh, father on the mountain. (laughs) Right. (laughs) With the long beard zapping people. (laughs) But, uh, and so I really kind of got into uh, self-help as sort of a, um, you know, it really kind of made sense to me because, you know, if you felt a certain way and you wanted to, uh, you know, improve your life. You read this book and you take certain actions and, and, uh, you know, it, you get, it creates, you know, a certain amount of results in your life. And, and that really appealed to me. And, um, uh, you know, I can say that, that new thought has a lot of the same elements. And, um, and so I think there's a lot of people out there that, uh, you know, we touched on it earlier that maybe they're agnostic, maybe they, 
are uh, big fans of you know the stuff that that Oprah has has uh, been promoting over the years. Uh, you know, maybe they're a big fan of Joel Osteen, but you know, I think if they got tapped into the larger pool of of new thought, they would realize that there's a whole there's a whole world of uh, ideas and principles out there that they can they can really uh, learn from, and there's just a unlimited resource of of teachers out there. There are. And and like I said, when we started, I love that you're in Mobile because I want people to know that Mm. it's, you know, it's all over the place. It's an international Mm. movement. It's not just, you know, in in big cities or it's all over the place. I'm from New Orleans. There's several unity churches there. Uh, There's a big one in Mandeville, I think, Louisiana. And they're just all over the place. And it's not just, you know something that's secluded to maybe the West Coast or Seattle or some type of stereotype of, you know, (laughs) because I know there's a stereotype of the big sort of... You got to be in a very progressive area or something. Yeah, or there's a stereotype of, I know, you know, being from Louisiana, Mm -hmm. that where mostly everyone's Catholic. Right. That you're not going to be able to find like-minded people. And that's just Mm. not true. This is an international movement. It really is. And I think... uh, you know, that's one thing that, that Unity really did a good job of is, uh, you know, reaching out to, you know, just middle America. And, uh, you know, Unity has, uh, and they've been doing this for well over 100 years, they have their Silent Unity program. And, uh, you know, basically, you know, it started with people writing in and sending their prayer requests. And, and, uh, and it's uh, developed into a phone ministry that still goes to this day where, you know, 24 hours a day, uh, 365 days a year, somebody is always praying uh, at Silent Unity um, for anybody that wants to call and, and pray, uh, you know, send in their prayer requests. And uh, and so that's, you know, that's one of the, you know, one of the big ways that they really tapped into, you know, people from all over the country, no matter where they were. Getting their uh, could prayers. Call, they could call in, yeah, absolutely, and get an affirmative prayer. And, uh, you know, and, and you know, the New Thought churches have really uh, spread all over, you know, literally all over the country and uh, and even, you know, all over the world in, in, different, uh, in different ways. And if you're out there and you think, oh, well, there's, you know, I live in the middle of Ohio. There's no way there's an unity church by me. <laughs> I think if you go to centers for spiritual living.com or google centers for spiritual mm-hmm, living mm-hmm. and then or you can google unity um there's a couple other websites and you can do a search and i was surprised some of the places that had yeah. a had a center yeah and i want to say there's a uh, there's a website that's a resource it might be find the cho- ah, find the church dot org uh don't don't quote me on that but it's something <laughs> like that but anyway it has all of all of uh, all types of new thought churches uh, listed. You can find unity, religious science, even a lot of the independence and divine science and universal foundation for better living um, has just a ton of them listed uh, all over the world, actually. And if you're, and if you really, really can't find something, um, Mm -hmm. which I doubt, I (laughs) I think that there are certain uh, Christian churches who are very aligned with it. I know universal sure. universal Unitarians. I think mm-hmm. are very right. very similar um, and very progressive thinking church. And also, um, there's a few other. I'll have to look it up and maybe post it on on the yeah, website. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot independent <laughs> churches. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, y- you know, and one of the cool things about this modern age that we're living in. And Internet. Kind of, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Part of my story is that, you know, I found I found out about unity and religious science through my iPod and downloading podcasts. So you can you can tune into, uh, you know, any so many different churches from around the country and around the world and and uh, put them on your iPod or pull them up on your computer or YouTube or I mean, there's just so many different ways. The main thing I want to stress is I just don't want people to give up and say, well, there's nothing out mm. there. I'm atheist. I'm agnostic, whatever. Right. There's Because the community, I mean, you get so much value. Yeah. You're learning from new people and just mm. being in communion with others. I know when I go to my church on Sunday and I just feel the love and the positive mm. energy, it definitely inspires me. 
and and I get to see what other people are doing in the community, volunteer projects, projects they're doing in Africa, projects they're doing all over the world. And it just inspires me to become a better person. So you should never stop searching, even if you're disillusioned with what's in your area. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, people, they get disillusioned because, you know, their church is too restrictive or or whatever. And, and uh, you know, just realize that, that not every place is, is exactly like where you came from, that there's there's all sorts of ways to be in the world. Well, we got to wrap up soon, but I want to talk about the power of prayer before we end, mm. because you mentioned uh, prayer and you never stop praying, even when you're agnostic mm. and you um, are talking about the Unity Church, you know, sending in your their prayers. Sure. And I just think, you know, I, I think I read a comment online recently where someone said, you know, people should take action in their lives instead of, you know, praying to some man on a mountain or whatever mm. that doesn't exist. Yeah. Santa Claus. And yeah. that's not exactly I, I know there's a lot of negativity out there with some of the, you know, extremist religions that are being projected or the, you know, extreme uh, churches like I've seen, you know, you'll you'll see these churches protesting hate, which is sure. not a, a principle in the Bible. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, sorry, not a principle in the Ten Commandments to oh, hate thy right. neighbor. I think you're right. But I just want to <laughs> let you guys know that the listeners out there that mm. that really isn't what prayer is, and mm. and I don't know how you would describe prayer, uh, John. And then yeah. I'll I'll go into my my spiel. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's sort of a. It's almost like a. Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of like cleaning house for me. You know, it's kind of like going through uh, on a very personal level and and finding the worries and concerns that I have and releasing and, them uh, and releasing them, letting letting exactly. them go to God and and uh, or a higher know, power or, or know, a higher the universe. Power, absolutely. And I, one of the uh, teachers in the movie, uh, Reverend Kristen Hawkins, um she had something very powerful to say. She said that um, that she didn't believe that there was any form of prayer that was wrong. You know, there's no wrong way to pray to God. You know, and so I think I think that's the main thing is just being authentic, uh, being real in your in your prayer life, and uh, just releasing those um, concerns and worries that you have, the the unforgiveness that you have, and, and just letting letting all those go. And knowing that uh, that God is directing your path, that um, that uh, that you're here for a purpose, you have a reason. That's beautiful. And also, I think meditation is important too, because mm. they say prayer is releasing, is letting God know what you want, and meditation is getting the answer. Because mm. yeah. <laughs> you're just yeah. being in the silence. You're just yeah. being in the silence. Yeah. So I think, and that I think. In our modern wor- uh, world that we live in now, I think that might be as hard as it's ever been. Because we need more silence, not too yeah, much noise. <laughs> so many distractions, you know, all of our devices and and tablets and everything else. There's always something beeping traffic at us. Traffic and the radio and the TV. <laughs> exactly. There's I always something agree to, more. to distract us. That's true. Uh, so I wanted to put a point in there for any, because I know I, I do have a lot of... Um, agnostic and atheist listeners mm, and i yeah. just wanted you guys to know that are very scientifically minded that there is very strong scientific evidence as you said john through mm-hmm. you know doctors and other things that prayer works mm-hmm. also there is there is very strong scientific evidence that what the words that you say to yourself so say you're atheist mm-hmm. and you don't believe in anything yeah. there is very strong scientific evidence psychological studies that have been done that the words that you say to yourself affect your outlook on life. Mm. So when you're praying, if you don't believe that there's anything out there, you're essentially literally speaking to yourself. If indeed you believe that there's nothing out there and those Mm. words are very powerful. So if you're saying every day to yourself, I'm an idiot, I'm Mm. stupid, I'm no good. Guess what you're going to be seeing around you. If you're saying to yourself, I'm powerful person, I'm beautiful, I'm sexy, I'm amazing, I have something valuable to give to this world, then that's going to do create another reality. And there's so for those of you who are saying, well, I don't really believe in prayer. I don't really believe in God. How, how can prayer help me? Prayer is simply like you said, John, releasing that negative, that mm. negativity, that worry, and also asking 
for the positive yeah. things in your life. It's kind of yeah. like goal setting in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Which has been proven to be very effective. Yeah, and I think uh, I think too many times this uh, this new thought movement gets kind of roped into a very materialistic uh, way of looking at things, and and uh, and I want people to know that it's not it's not just about getting things. It's about uh, it really is about um, self creating more happiness. Yeah, creating more right, happiness, love, right. compassion, empathy. And there's nothing wrong with having things, and and you can get things, but. Uh, what I want people to know is that uh, within the New Thought movement, uh, people understand that uh, just acquiring things does not lead to fulfillment. I couldn't agree more, but I do think that acquiring uh, more knowledge and information and compassion oh, yeah. and love and all those other things does. <laughs> oh, <sure. laughs> absolutely. No, I just mean material things. That, no, no. Yeah, so absolutely. it just depends on what your focus is focuses right. on. Right. And, and, I, I mean, I, I only say that because I, I think uh, a lot of people are too quick to dismiss the new thought movement because they do have that uh, preconceived notion that uh, it's all about getting things, know, getting the diamond necklace. And getting yeah. <laughs> the, the car. And, and uh, but if so. you dig a little deeper, it's actually all about personal development. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, there is a strong personal development um, thread. I mean, not, not even a thread. I would call it a rope. Yeah. Of looking deeper inside Absolutely. of you and saying, what is my purpose? What is my true purpose here? Am I just here, you know, to go to the Gap and go to Macy's and go shopping? <laughs> right. Or am I here to create a difference that's going to make a global change? Absolutely. An international Absolutely. change where I can help society and humankind. And that's what I really, really love about it. Um, John, I'm so sad that I have to wrap up with you because I could probably <laughs> talk to you for three more hours. <laughs> well, this has been great. I've enjoyed it so much. And uh, I've just I really appreciate you having me on the show and uh, appreciate your your personality and just uh, getting to know you a little bit through this conversation. And I do go back home quite a bit to visit. So hopefully we'll be able to meet up sometime back in the uh, deep south. That would be awesome. I would love that. Um, John, where can people find the New Thought movie and get inspired and learn <laughs> some knowledge? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you could go to uh, newthoughtmovie.com. The movie is called What is New Thought? But uh, we're on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, you can also find the movie on Amazon if you just look up uh, New Thought movie or What is New Thought? We have... Uh, the uh, just regular movie edition and we have the expanded edition that's got some uh, bonus features and stuff and it's um, purchased per like it's pay to play kind of thing uh well if we're still working on that <laughs> uh, there is a uh there is a way you can uh you can get it through uh i think uh oh gosh what is it uh, my gum puppy road barking. yeah if you look on gumroad.com you can find uh it you can do like streaming and stuff but otherwise uh it's only available through dvd okay um and if you guys aren't sure if you want to you know buy the movie i know that there's some great samples on youtube for people to kind of get interested absolutely yeah you can watch the uh the first part of the movie on uh, youtube for free and there's all kinds of uh, trailers and uh clips from the movie and stuff on youtube too well that's it guys check it out what is new thought the movie Thank you so much, John. This has been Out of the Box with Rosie Tran. Guys, please visit outoftheboxpodcast.com and click on the donate button. We're now accepting Litecoins and Bitcoins. Outoftheboxpodcast.com. 